Hello everyone, and welcome back to Rise of the Phoenix, the melting of the Ice Age tribe as we rise from the ashes and hopefully are creating an entire line of phoenixes who will spread out throughout this Ice Age plagued world and hopefully rescue the nichelings who are scattered amongst the ice. Uh, however, before we do that, we need more phoenixes and I think that our very first phoenix Phoenix Squash Blossom may be finding that future with Yuka, Yaka even, who is down here and they actually realized amidst the exploring they stumbled on a nest, they stared into each other's eyes, and they realized they smelled amazing to one another since they do have immunities that do not overlap. And as you guys know in my roleplay of our niche adventures and legacies, I say they smell good to each other the way the animals will smell very good to each other if they would make uh, some good mates. So hopefully Squash Blossom and hopefully Yuka will have a bat winged baby. Because Yuka has bat wing and because she also has heat body recessive, she gets double bat wing mutations. Because Squash Blossom has double bat wings and heat body, he gets double bat wing mutations. So I think we are truly preparing, finally, to take flight. Just in time, too, because we do have a very jealous prince staring out of the shadows, almost like Scar in Lion King, if you ask me. Because Ari is an extremely strong prince from a noble line, the grandson of the great phoenix herself, and yet he was not blessed by the Nishling gods with an ember heart or a heat body, and the only trait that he truly has to offer are his saber fangs. And it simply is not enough when compared to Squash Blossom, who isn't even directly descended from Phoenix. So I do think that Aji is having a very difficult moment right now. Hopefully he will be able to rechannel his energy anyway, because IMB, A&H, I do think he had, he had his eyes out for Yuka, and yet here Squash Blossom is just sweeping her off her feet with his wings. So whew, we'll have to see how that plays out. But speaking of things playing out, we do need to come over. Hurry, Flame, stay by your mate's side because it is actually Honey and Flame's last days. I can't believe this. Oh my gosh. I just cannot believe this is happening. We need to get their daughter Ember over because I do think that she will be temporarily the queen of the island. Um, I do think Squash Blossom would be considered like the king of the island, but he might inherit that title once he becomes a little older. So Ember may not have her children actually end up becoming the like next king and queen. I do think that will be Squash Blossom, but I think that will happen when he's just a pinch older and he comes back from his adventuring. So until then, I need Ember to return to her family's side to take up their place on this tree stump and call out to try to bring more wanderers to our Ice Age nichelings, our Phoenix nichelings, I should say. They will be jumping back into the icy waters as soon as we finish getting some phoenixes, though. Or flying over the icy waters, I should say. Uh, but we need to get Ember over here to kind of take up the duty of calling for new nichelings. Or maybe some more Berina snacks, which we actually just got. Imkar, Kiki, and Mithi actually just finished off some, uh, <laughs> finished off a Berina. So that was quite helpful. Uh, let's see, I and D immunity, I and B immunity. I do need to start getting some of my saber fang females breeding. And I do think that string being, after having to be here and be responsible for some of the tragic twist of watching the sickly babies pass away under her, her guidance is looking for a mate as well. D and H immunity. Hmm. I and H immunity. Hmm. I and H immunity. <laughs> Nobody smells good to her, though. Oh, poor String Bing. I really wanted her to be able to pass on that scorpion tail, too. B and I. Oh, B and I! Tricar! Get down here! You're strong, and we don't have, like, any traits that we really have to worry about you, like, missing out on. I'm gonna bring him down here, because he heard about that Barina, and he wants to see what all the fuss was about. So we're gonna get him down here. 
And we're mostly carrying on where we left off the last few episodes, guys, because I really want to be able to see uh, the conclusion of the Rise of the Phoenix with the three to five Phoenix babies born. Rico is going... Raw, Ro. Hmm, I an H immunity. Hmm. Hmm. We are getting closer and closer to getting pickier and pickier about who breeds with who, too. Speaking of which, Taro has been attracted to the calls that Pepper has been making. Uh, INH immunity. Hmm. Yeah, he's been attracted to the calls that Pepper has been making. And they're not a great match. And I would- I'm gonna wait another day because we're about to unlock high fertility. Mm, but I do I do need to start really pushing on that heat body baby having soon. So, hmm, decisions. Tabasha might need to come back. She's got recessive heat body. Um, H and K. Ooh, and she would actually possibly be a good mate for Taro. But then we have Renta. Ooh, Renta, I and B. <gasps> Ooh, Renta would be the perfect mate for her, actually. Fantastic. Renta, I might send you over. I think that Tabasha is a little lonely back here, though. But I'm going to let her gather up some food. Renta will gather up some food. Alrico, his little sister, is over here with his little brother, Ash. There you will both be gathering up. There's a ton of food over here, actually. So I think Renta can come and join the family where Rico used to be. Uh, meanwhile, Namael finds herself pregnant once more, this time with the child of flirty cactus fruit, who's kind of sticking around for the snacks at this point, maybe to see what this kid looks like, but he is quite curious about where that handsome Taro ran off to. Taro, uh, pepper smells good to you, doesn't make you sneeze the way pepper sometimes does, uh, but again, gonna make them wait one more day. So I'm gonna have him kind of wander around a little bit. Maybe jump up here. I should probably have every tree stump occupied. All right, meanwhile, Honey is going to sing a song as her final moments, the passing of a honey sweet queen and her flame king. This is a little hard to deal with, but at least they will be with each other. Little Fumi was at least temporarily kind of adopted into the family to console Honey in her final days as an elder. Uh, and I think that little Fumi, if she can dig, she's just gonna be our little gatherer. She doesn't really have any traits that we are particularly eager to breed for. So she will just be here keeping the queen and the king company in their elder moments. Let's see. Come on, nudie shlinks. Or even a barina. And then once they pass away, we will send a little Fumi off to possibly be in charge of some of the food down here. It'd be really cool. Oh, <gasps> food! 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 It'd be really cool if we could get a lot more food. All right, let's let Irie go and see where those bundles came from to try to reduce his irritation over how this is turning out. And Squash Blossom's going to kind of dance around his mate and hopefully get a little bit closer to unlocking that bird beak for us. All right, we're getting these jeans. I'm gonna get them yet. Oh, bird beak! Come on, buddy. Oh, there was a bundle! Yes, I can't wait to do more bundle hunting with winged nichelings. Zushudan really should be looking. He does have a heart of ember. What are you doing not using your heart of ember, buddy? I've got to work on that with you, huh? Gosh, it's so hard to find where. Where's your ember heart? There we go. So I and H immunity, huh? We got to find him D and B immunity. No, H and K. We're going to have to find him a good mate. I and H, I and H. B and K, not a good match. I and B with Mivy. Hmm, we might end up with some sickly babies, but he might have to start having some kids soon because he's a winged nicheling and that is very important. Uh, I'm gonna have String Bean jump down and help to gather some of that. Mkar is gonna do a little bit of calling out. Kiki, B and K immunity. She can help gather some of the, no, she cannot help gather some of the food. What can you do, Kiki? Well, you're knowable. Hmm, I think I'm gonna have her maybe help with calling. Cause I just really, and then we'll send, <gasps> Mivy, somebody was stealing, was it a bundle or was it a nicheling? We had someone stealing some of the food over there. So we need to see what's happening over here. 
All right. And now, our final moments with the honey sweet queen and a wonderful flame king. They have actually provided quite a bit to this tribe. They led both with the ferocity that Phoenix hoped that the tribe would adopt in order to save themselves, and they also led with a gentleness that was born of the love that they had for one another, doing their best with every new nicheling to try to adjust to the variety of skills and traits that were brought into the tribe while still making the extremely difficult decisions of how to watch after the welfare of the tribe to the best of their ability. Rest in peace, noble king and wonderful queen. That's always really hard. We have, however, unlocked high fertility, which gives me hope for our future phoenixes and everyone else. We have key lime, <gasps> a bat winged baby who has just been born. I kind of feel like cactus fruit would be like, cool, grab a fruit and head out of here. I am not even joking. I totally think that's what he would do to see what Pepper is up to because she smells good to him. Uh, but oof, man, Taro, you better watch out, buddy. Uh, yeah, wow, okay, so we have little key lime. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that name because cactus fruit had the child. And then we have, oh, <gasps> Bana! Bana, the little flying Bana. She unfortunately does not have heat body, but she is a flyer. So we do have hope yet. Oh my gosh. All right, well, that's a good thing. I think that Yuka actually would be quite taken, but I don't know. I wonder if Squash Blossom would be a little alarmed and pointing out she was not born with heat body. She is not a Phoenix. She does fly. But she is not a phoenix. Do I have any heat body females on the island? I do not. So don't be so picky, buddy. Don't be so picky. I think that Yuka will be a little offended and a little hurt. She looks just like me. Is there something wrong with that? Uh, ooh. I don't think that that went over well. Hmm, squash blossom. We must think of, uh, I am supposed to, to become king. I am supposed to think of what is best for the tribe. And yet, I will admit, this is a strong daughter, and I can sense the heart of Ember within her. Perhaps this is a good sign, a sign that uh, we will have healthy children. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't give either of them high fertility. I could actually gift Bana with high fertility if she had a, like, mm, I might do that anyway. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Squash Blossom has decided to stop panicking. Maybe it was just first time parental jitters. Uh, ooh, haha. -ha. But I think Irie will come in, and I think he will kind of scoff and think that he would have never hurt Yuka's feelings upon the birth of their first child if he had only been the one allowed to, to take her as a mate instead. Winged menace. All right, there we go. We've got so much food. I am so happy about that. We are just piling that food up, which makes me so content. Ariko, I might need you to have some babies soon, Ariko. Um, you are so freaking beautiful, too. But who to have babies with? B and G immunity. <gasps> H and I immunity. Oh my gosh, with Ash? Your brother? But the thing is, they have perfect immunity for it. They truly do. Well, I'm not going to question it. And I don't think Enrico will either. They didn't question it. They already had their mutations assigned. They live in decadent abundance of food. I'm not going to question it. Let's just go for it. Uh, meanwhile, I do think that Tabasha might come over and I think that Enrico would be very happy to have a nest sister. We haven't had nest sisters in a long time, so Tabasha will arrive just as a new baby begins to appear. Zushudan is going to continue his exploring, but he does need to find a mate soon who has heat body I and B, I and H. Maybe he'll just kind of start leaving behind babies. Mithi? I'm gonna give you high fertility, my dear. Uh, I think that he might just kind of like fly by. Maybe surrounded by nests. She's not getting any younger. She's beginning to wonder about her place. Oh, and it worked. 
And Zeustrodon can actually show off by catching some food, which I think Mivy would be pretty impressed by. And then he's going to do a little bit of flying into a tree, because why not? Oh, and there's Tempeh, poor little old man. I did not mean to feed him unintentionally, uh, the toxic berries, but there you have it. Also, Zeustrodon, because you are a flying nicheling, and because you have heat body, you actually get double bat wing. Mivy already has hers assigned. Imkar is going to do a little bit of calling out, and I think String Bean is going to take a risk. Uh, actually, B and I... Ooh, actually, just as I was thinking that, Rakar shows up, and he smells fantastic. So I'm going to give him higher fertility to maybe try to slip that into the tribe, and I'm going to give her normal blood clotting? No, let's go really exotic. How close are we to... <gasps> I want to give her toxic body. I want to give her toxic body so bad. Oh my gosh. Let's harvest these up. Let's go ahead and harvest these up. Oh my goodness. I'm going to I'm going to try to get her toxic body. Let's have Drakar come over to introduce himself. Uh cuz they smell amazing to each other and love is in the air. Love is in the air and he can he he might go on and on about how he could be quite strong and provide plenty of protection. I really hope we can get more new wandering nichelings with some feathers involved in this tribe soon. Uh, and I do think Taro is going to come over. Hmm. Pepper, can you do better? I and H, I and H. You guys would have like really unhealthy babies if you ask me. And I kind of want to keep that hammer tail in the line. And I really like Taro. Hmm. Yes, I think that we'll go ahead. And Pepper, I think, is going to be a little... Like, she, she's going to be polite to Cactus Fruit, but kind of a little alarmed by him just showing up out of the blue. Taro, no luck calling anybody new, huh? And little Fumi, I think, will wander over. Oh, Fumi! You're an undetended baby! Don't eat that! I think she would eat it. Ah! Poor little one. Let's let's have Raro jump down. But I do think that Fumi, as a little unattended baby, just learned the pain of cactus and will probably not do that again. It just made a lot of sense to like have a baby wander by and be like, what's this? And then like ow. You know what I mean? B and I immunity. <gasps> Tabasha! Actually. Tabasha, you need to come up and you actually need to take uh, Rinta as your mate. That'll work out much better. And Rinta, you already have your your traits assigned. And that way, Ariko and Ash can remain mates. He, I think he's going to jump down to see what his siblings are up to. Uh, and meet Tabasha while he is jumping down there. Ember, you need to come back over as queen, my dear. It is time. Soon you will have uh, you will have Squash Blossom return to his place as king, but for now, Ember, you must be queen. Oh, I can't believe we had to say goodbye to one queen and welcome another. She, as many of the phoenixes, is standing on the bones of her mother. Holy cow! And let us see what the surprises of the day bring us now. One baby! One new baby! And <gasps> she's so beautiful, but she's not bat winged, but she is ember bodied. Oh my gosh. Look at this. She's beautiful. I'm going to actually name her uh, Ri Kiko after her grandmother, or maybe, well, actually, their names both begin with A. Uh, Akiko? Akiko, maybe? Let's go with Akiko, kind of after her grandmother, who also had... Actually, she looks like Hope! <gasps> she does look like Great Grandma Hope. Oh my gosh, she really does. Okay, I kind of want to name her... Uh, no, I'm going to leave her name Akiko. Akiko Hope. 
maybe a Kiko. We're just gonna go with a Kiko. But she looks so much like her grandmother, her great grandmother. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And she has blue eyes. She's beautiful. I wonder if she is she's just just oh I just can't wait to see what happens with her. I wonder if she's meant to kind of balance out the more strictness that we've had to do with Toxic Body. Hopefully we can unlock Toxic Body in time for String Bean to have a baby, but I don't know. That's really gonna be pushing it. That's really gonna be pushing it, but it would be so cool. And we're gonna have to see where our other babies are going to take us. Little Bana is oh Cactus fruit, I found you a girlfriend. And she has lean body. <gasps> that would be so freaking useful. Yes. All right. Maybe we will have Irie like take on a new mate. Who knows? We've got a wanderer who has just approached. We've got a little bit more work to do to finish unlocking the genes that I am after. And then it is going to have to be the couple. Oh. Ah! oh my gosh. Not quite Yuki. Almost Yuki. It's a Yuki look-alike, but he is definitely cream colored. And we have a unattended female who is just coming over to find some love. That's not the kind of love we were looking for. We are going to have to do something about this. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like to drop a lucky phoenix feather. We are getting closer and closer to the final rise of the phoenixes. I am so excited to see this part of the challenge through. I can't believe we've been with this tribe for over 100 days now. They have journeyed across so much and their story is still continuing. And if you would like to join this and literally thousands of nicheling and other adventures, do please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!